If you've ever wanted to boost your network performance and ensure high availability, you're in the right place. Legs let you harness the power of multiple network links as they work together seamlessly. Whether you're a networking beginner or a seasoned pro, get ready to unlock the full potential of your network. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll explain some key points for configuring link aggregation groups, legs, on Cisco business switches. Next. First things first, a quick check to make sure that link aggregation is supported on the device. To check on a CBS 350 switch, navigate to port management and then link aggregation. Since two switches are usually connected for a leg, be sure to check both devices. To start configurations on each switch, navigate to link aggregation and then leg management. Specify the ports that will be part of the leg. It is very important that the ports speed, duplex mode, flow control, and MTU size settings on each device are the same. To check this, navigate to port management and then port settings. Here, you can see the port speed, duplex mode, and whether it's a part of a leg or not. Under the leg settings menu, you can see the flow control parameter configured for any legs. Continuing with the theme of matching settings for each side of the leg, you should verify that the virtual local area network, VLAN membership on each port is the same. Navigate to VLAN management and then port VLAN membership. Check the VLAN binding for each switch port. It will show the operational VLANs status. On this switch, only VLAN one is configured and mapped on the ports. The next thing to remember is to configure the leg before adding it to the VLAN instead of adding individual ports. While still on the port VLAN membership page, filter the interface type with either port or leg to see the VLAN association accordingly. If you select leg on the drop-down menu and then click the go button, it will show the leg interfaces and VLANs associated with each leg interface. Be sure the leg is completely configured before connecting the devices to each other. A network loop will occur if there are several connections made between them and neither one has loop prevention. Normal network traffic can be slowed down or stopped by network loops. Using ethernet or fiber cables, make sure you connect to the proper ports you added to the leg by taking note of the ports on each one. If connecting with fiber cables, make sure that you are using a supported SFP module. When connecting the cables, use caution. If the port numbers have different speeds, duplex modes, or MTU settings, or if you connect ports that are not members of the leg, the leg alerts you and rejects the setup. Once everything is connected, the LED for each connected port will blink green. You can also check the admin interface of each device to verify that the link is up. All set. Wow, that was a lot to remember. Here's a summary of the tips that were covered today. Some key things to keep in mind when configuring legs on Cisco business switches. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.